My name is Jeffrey Herlings. I'm a professional MXGP rider, race for Rebel KTM factory racing team. I'm from Holland and racing in the MXGP class. Jeffrey Herlings, Roman Fevre, they are tied on points. We will have a world champion after this race. This is a direct shootout between the top two in the world. Jeffrey Herlings is the MXGP World Champion. A lot of people want to know what I would have done if I didn't win this championship this year again. I guess you'll never know. <laughs> At least I, I got into my injury year with a, with a bang, you know, I, I finished off as a world champion. And from the same point of view, it's also hurting because I couldn't defend, but uh, here we are, we're back again. We took one year off because of an injury, but we're back and trying to be in the same spot in about six, seven months from now. Last season was, uh, was a really good one for me. I started the season really strong, uh, winning yeah, quite many GPs. Uh, then in the middle of the season I had a little bit of, uh, let's say, uh, some problems with the health, some issues. But anyway, then towards the end I came back and I won my fifth world title. So uh, overall, looking back, it uh, was a great season. As a champion, you always believe. If you don't believe, if you don't see yourself doing it before you even do it, you will never win. But of course, sometimes you have some doubts. We are humans, you know? We have just blood under the skin, same like all the other guys. I would be lying if I say that you never have a doubt. But Tim Geiser crosses the line as a five-time world champion. Unbelievable. I mean, I'm speechless, you know. To win one title, it's a lot. But to win already like five with, uh, with the crew, you know, with HRC, you know, we are, we are an amazing team, you know. I think what is the most important thing is uh, try to stay, stay healthy, you know, uh, without any injuries, being consistent. So every weekend trying to be there, collecting the points. Um, so yeah, that's going to be important. On uh, every second that you are on the bike, you can be injured and out of the season, so... Uh...
can come to on practice day, it can come on racing. It's only six tenths behind the Englishman. Guys are going after Renault. It's the sport, it's like this. Top of the hill! for Tim Geiser. Wow! He was just a passenger. He was... I had some bad injury in my career. Uh, I wish uh, I had less, but uh, yeah, I had some difficult times. Uh, really long also out of the bike, but yeah, it's um, for some days, some weeks, then you feel like yeah, you want to quit or you want to, to just don't do that anymore, but um, yeah, as soon as you feel better, then yeah, it's already out of your mind and, and you are just focused on, uh, on the comeback. I'm Romain Febvre, coming from France, and I'm a professional motocross rider. Even if you win the last races, you can come to the next one and crash and be injured. It's really hard, uh, mentally, Many riders don't have that mentality to be as strong as maybe we are. And uh, I think it makes the difference uh, at the end on the result and on the career. But look, now, okay, now I teach you something. How you eat the banana? <laughs> Where you open? Here or here? If uh, a problem, you open there. Yes, if a problem, you the other side. Yeah. So, in the past I open also here. But I, if you look, the monkeys eat the banana. The monkeys, they open here. Yeah, because this they used to, to hold the banana. <laughs> so the monkeys are not so stupid. Yeah, yeah. Um, bon appetit. <laughs> Grazie. I think it is possible to be champion. I know of myself that I have all the skills and tools to, to win. Of course, um, Jeffrey Beck, a bunch of other guys which are there to win. It's never easy, you know, at, at any year, whoever is there. Now I'm a five times five world champion, you know, and, and I want to I wanna become the world champion. Jeremy C was second. Geiser, Siwa, and Koldenhoff. Tim Geiser with the gold plate. Tim Geiser, Jeremy Siwa, and Kaiwa. Bronze for Prado, silver Siwa, and gold for Tim Geiser. If you finish second that often, I mean, the expectation is not to finish third, it's to finish first. That's just human being. What it takes, I mean, it needs a perfect team around you, good mechanics, a good bike, uh, good fitness. Of course, also some luck needs to be on your side. Uh, it's plenty of things. In the end, I think it's in the head, you know, because everybody can ride a bike, everybody's fit and training. You need to be fit and ready in your head also, you know, without putting too much pressure, it has to come normal to you. I had some really serious injuries. The biggest problem was nerves problem. The two first doctors told me, sir, you will never ever go back on a motorcycle. Every day I was working that arm because I just wanted to be back on the bike. Before that race, in my head, I had a little bit of a discussion with myself. I want to be world champion with a race win and I want to be world champion with a, with a GP win. Maxim Renault, he is crowned MX2 world champion. was yeah the happiest moment of my of my life that's for sure my name is Maxime Renault I'm from France I'm 22 years old and I'm a pro motocross rider um, I am someone that 
always try to give my best, but I would say even more than this, you know, like I'm obsessed with my work. Uh, what I can say is that I put everything into work to become world champion again and uh, to become world champion as much as possible. So yeah, when I do something, I try to go to my limits and try to do it as best as possible. Oi! Tengo el pelo bien, la, ¿sí? I'm uh, Jorge Prado Garcia. I'm 22 years old and I'm racing for Red Bull Gas Gas Factor racing team. And I'm from Spain. I had a very good MX2 career, winning in 2018 and 2019. 2019, I won pretty much 99% of the races. I would say I have enough experience. Uh, this is already the fourth year in the MXGP class. I've been already two times world champion. I've been fighting for a title for three years. So I hope this year it can be the one. Coming into the 2023 season, possibly the most significant rule change is the qualifying race and how uh, riders will now be faced with the qualifying race points. A Grand Prix was decided uh, over two races and that is still the case. So let's say for instance, uh, a rider takes two race wins, that's 25 points per race gives you 50 points for the overall Grand Prix classification. That will still be the same situation. Now, the qualifying race previously determined only the gate position for the main races. However, for this year, that changes because the first 10 places in the qualifying race will now carry points. So 10 points for the first place rider, one point for the 10th place rider. And that could have significance on the championship when it comes to the final standings. The points won't count for the overall classification of the Grand Prix, but they will count for the World Championship itself. Potentially, the winner of a Grand Prix could pick up 60 points. Two 25s for winning both races and the overall Grand Prix, plus the 10 points extra from the qualifying race. The big question regarding the qualifying race this year is, in the past, riders have been happy to settle for a fourth or a fifth or a sixth, anywhere in the top five positions that the rider might have been happy with. You put 10 points on the line, all of a sudden, if you're in the championship chase, those 10 points could be important at the end of the series. So who will push in the qualifying race? Who will have to push? Who needs to push? It'll be interesting to see from the first round who is prepared to push for those 10 extra points, even for that one extra point for 10th place. It's an interesting situation to be faced with. So we have Kawasaki Racing MXGP factory team and they have Roman Fevre starting the season fit, which will definitely make a difference this year. He has a new teammate in Mitch Evans, which leaves a spot in Team HRC, which is going to be filled by the Spaniard Ruben Fernandez. <laughs> For the Gas Gas team, they have the same riders as last year, Jorge Prado and Mattia Guadagnini. But this is going to be Mattia's first full year in the class, which will be interesting to see. We see this year's standing construct going to Honda. They have the same lineup with Brian Bogus and Paul Jonas. 
and Calvin Vlandrin will be the only rider in the class for the Gevin Van Venroy Yamaha Racing Team this year. For the Monster Energy Yamaha Factory MXGP team, they have the same riders as last year with Maxim Renault, Glenn Koldenhoff and Jeremy Siwa. The Red Bull KTM Factory MXGP team have Jeffrey Hurlings back after a year going missing last year. He's going to be eager to be chasing his sixth world title and he wants to be back on top form. But the interesting thing this year is that he's going to be under the watchful eye of new team manager Tony Cairoli. So the MXGP riders run powerful 450cc engines, but there's another class just as exciting to watch. That's the MX2 class with the 250cc slightly lighter engines and with an age limit of 23 years old. But this year there's even more changes to the lineup in the paddock. One of these riders will be world champion for Tom Vial. It'll be for the second time for Yago Kitt. For the first time, Tom Vial. And he leads. Ah, oh, mistake. Ah, oh, they're both down. They're both down. And Tom Vial will win the world championship in 2022. Yago Kitt. Silver medal once again. I think one of the firm favourites this year coming into the season for the MX2 title would be Yago Hitz. We've seen him miss out three years in a row now. He's got unfinished business in the class. Yago Hitz starts 2023 as the favourite in MX2. Three silver medals and a bronze medal over the last four years. No Tom Vial lining up as defending champion. The last couple of years, we've seen those two riders pretty much go toe to toe. And Dietz is alongside the out. He will try to squeeze the belt into the inside. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's my last year in MX2. So it's my last chance at the world title in MX2. It's going to be an exciting and for sure a, a long season. He is the favourite to line up and, and lift the title. But as we know, 19 rounds, it's not going to be easy. Anything can happen. He does have other riders behind him that want that title as well. And I do think one of the main riders is going to be his teammate, Thibaut Beniston. Thibaut Beniston, who will eventually and finally stand on the top step of the podium here. And we saw last year in 2022, I mean, he really did give Yago a run for his money. After that, Simon Langenfelder, a Grand Prix winner in emphatic fashion as well uh, at Matchley Basin last year. Two wins, took his first red plate, his, his first overall Grand Prix victory. He goes 1-1 to win his first Grand Prix. I think not many people expect me to win, but uh, I guess then I, I shocked uh, many people. Unfortunately, it was only one time that year, but uh, we hope uh, to, do, to do good also this year. <laughs> he finished third last season, so I'm sure he's coming into this year with a newfound confidence. Coming into 2023, it's all changed at Red Bull KTM in the MX2 category. Three new riders with Andrea Adamo, Liam Everts and Sasha Kuna. They're a young, eager team. Um, they've got a lot of motivation and plus we're forgetting that they also have Tony Cairoli as their team manager. Adamo got on the podium in Mantova last year, second overall in what was a pretty explosive final couple of laps of the second race that day. He's going to be on the podium. I'm sure he's going to be on the podium. On the paper, the main contender is going to be Yago. For sure, it's not going to be only him. There is going to be more riders. We are a lot of good riders. You have uh, some new teammates this year. Yeah. What do you think about uh, Mr. Our ass. <laughs> <laughs> Liam Evans, another rider that with factory material could find himself on the podium. Could he challenge for the World Championship? Who knows? It's going to be close at the top. I think only after three, four GPs you can really say who will set, set the mark. I don't know if it will be Iago. KTM, the factory team, have a way of turning riders from almost sort of unknowns to household names title contenders, title winners. That's been 
sort of the story of KTM since 2001, 2002. Sasha Koonin, the third rider on the KTM team, will be missing for the first couple of months, possibly. Picked up a dislocated shoulder one week before Argentina. That means it's going to be down to his twin brother, Lucas Koonin, at Nastan Husqvarna Factory Racing. Yeah, last year was, oh, MX2 guy, uh, he's fast. But now I, I know after the winter, we train a lot with these guys. I say, yeah, uh, it's not because I'm 16, I cannot battle with these guys. So now it's just my turn to get on the gas. I think we'll see a lot of the Husqvarna boys this year. We have Rome van der Moosdijk and Kai de Wolf. Both are eager to win that title. And we know that's what they're aiming for this year. For sure, Jago will be a title contender, but um, yeah, I think everyone has a chance at the moment. Everyone's working hard, so uh, we'll see where we end up. Yeah, I need to do everything to, uh, to be in the top spots because uh, when the two-time champion is, is gone, um, a new champion will be there. Also, in young people coming up, like my teammate Lucas, they are all hungry and uh, they want to go for it. Kevin Horgmo had a fantastic 2022. The FNH Kawasaki rider realized a dream of getting on a podium in MX2 when he stood on the second step in Latvia. For sure, there will be a new champion in MX2 in 2023. It's a lot of guys going for a title, and uh, I hope to be one of them that can challenge. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a good year. The list is huge in the amount of potential Grand Prix winners and along with that list, the riders who could be, should be fighting for that world title. So MX2 this year could be very exciting indeed. Skit leads Adamo in this Ram MX2 qualifying race. It's in the red gloves. And Adamo all over the back of him. Less than a second now. Thiago Gitz crosses the line. He wins. Ten points for the Ram qualifying race win. And the MXGP Ram qualifying race here in Patagonia, Argentina. We've got a full grid behind the gate. A unique sight as well for this round here in Argentina. 40 riders into that first turn. But it's uh, Prado who leads the way. Guadagnini in second position. Third, Ruben Fernandez for Team HRC. Jonas tries to read it and reads it well, but not well enough. Siwa goes through. Siwa takes over fourth place. So Maxim Renault, good drive, gets through the waves, goes around the outside, finds the pass there just towards the end of the straight. A 91, see what? Fernandez just ahead of him, directly ahead of him now. And uh, he goes through. So see what? Finds his way past Fernandez with two to go. And moves up into third place. Oh, Siwa! Big, big crash for Siwa. He picks himself up somehow, goes running to his bike. Big moment on takeoff, and another one there for Maxim Renault. Maxim Renault does get past Ruben Fernandez. He will move into third place. And Jorge Prado, Red Bull Gas Gas Factory Racing, takes the first round qualifying race in the MXGP class of 2023 and 10 massive world championship points. Second for Mattia Guadagnini of what was a Red Bull Gas Gas 1-2.
is Jorge Prado ready to step up and be a title challenger? Um, there'll be a lot of fans, a lot of noise, a lot of support here for the Gas Gas Rider. So it's going to be down to him to come away from here with a, a good positive start to the season. MXGP, it's a tough class. We are the best, let's say, in the world, racing to each other. The highest accomplishment in the sport of motocross is winning an MXGP race. That's why all your sacrifices go into to win from the best guys out there.